You are listening to Life After Debt with the Marcus Garrett, where we help underpaid professionals find easier ways to make more money. I'm here with Cody. At age 22, like a familiar story, you had zero dollars in net worth and you have, I'll hit the middle, at age 25, uh, 24, you went from 300,000 to 700,000 and now at, I assume you're age 27, but maybe there's a birthday that I missed, <laughs> you were at 2 million. So that's why I have brought you here to talk about making money. Welcome to the show, Cody. Thank you, man. Yeah, good to be back. And it's pretty crazy. Yeah, hit that milestone five years after being almost at zero at 22. It's been one hell of a journey, but I've learned a lot along the way and I have a lot more to learn, but hoping I can share some wisdom with your listeners about some of the things I've learned. Any, I, I saw on Twitter, you were talking about that part of that journey was tracking. Is like, is there any takeaway going from zero to 2 million that you'd like to quickly share? Yeah. I mean, it's invest, invest, invest. I think I had another tweet. I don't know if you saw it, but I was just doing the calculations. And if I had that money in just like a savings account, instead of investing in the stock market and real estate and my businesses, I would have a net worth that's $800,000 less. Like 1.2 oh, wow. million versus 2 million. And that's just in a five year investing window. So if you're not investing now, start investing, whether that's stocks, real estate, whatever, whatever floats your boat, whatever you want to invest in, make your money work for you. I think we've hooked the audience. So uh, what I brought you on for today is you made, in addition to all this other money, $718 in a week on Etsy. Please yeah. explain. Please explain. <laughs> this is going way back. So this is kind of... <laughs> Toward the beginning of my entrepreneurial journey, I was like looking for all these different side hustles. I was trying different side hustles. I was doing freelance writing, podcast editing, and it was actually my friend, Julie. She introduced me to this idea of selling digital products on Etsy. And the reason why I was so attracted to this was then we talked about in a previous podcast episode I did with you, Marcus, like I got introduced to the four hour work week and the idea that your time and money didn't have to be linearly related. Like you didn't always have to trade X number of hours to get Y dollars. You could instead like build something or create something that would then pay you and you get passive income from it. So that was digital products for me. I started creating a bunch of stuff in Canva to sell on Etsy and Honestly, the first couple months were crickets. Like I was terrible at designing. I didn't know what to make. I had no idea what I was doing. But you know, lo and behold, after a couple months, I started like following seasonal trends and getting better at designing. And I had a seven hundred and eighteen dollar week. And that was like the light bulb digital products moment for me. Where I was like, OK, this is really cool. It's actually I was skiing at Lake Tahoe with a bunch of other Finn Connors. It's an event that Marcus and I and a lot of other personal finance content creators go to. Skiing in Lake Tahoe, wasn't working on the biz, and end of the week, $718 in the bank account without trading a single minute of time. It was just like life changing seeing that that was possible. So, for those uh, who don't have the calculator at home or are smarter than me, <laughs> that's $37,000 a year side money. So, $718 <laughs> a week, that's, you know, it's not pocket change. Or maybe for some people, it's pocket change. It would be pocket change for me. Um, you, well, you hit this. So I'll clear this up for the listening audience. What is a digital product? Yeah. So a digital product is just like it sounds. It's a product that you sell, but it's on the computer. So it's not something that you're physically shipping. That's why it's passive. If you were you know, selling baskets on Etsy or selling t-shirts or selling like handmade crafts, then you'd have to deal with shipping and inventory and all that fun stuff. But with digital products, it's like you create the digital file. And then once the customer buys it, it just automatically gets sent to their computer and they can you know, some some digital products are like printables where you would actually print it out on a printer. There's like calendars and planners and printable games and invitations. And some of them are just like digital products that would sit on a computer, like a digital planner, for example. Or I could I could sell you like a media kit, Marcus, that you could use for like YouTube and podcasts. And then it's just like a file that you would use in your computer. So yeah, there's thousands of different digital products, but basically it's just a digital file that you're selling to somebody else. So I'm going to have to guess, and they can drop in the comments, but I'm going to have to guess what they would ask. So I've got about five, 10 questions here. How do you know what to sell on Etsy? So I'm a huge data driven guy and I like to use keyword research tools and like SEO, search engine optimization. So for Etsy specifically, there's this tool called E-Rank. It's kind of like for those who are familiar with like doing keyword research with Google, there's like all these different Google tools like Uber Suggest and keywords everywhere and Ahrefs. This E-Rank is like that for Etsy. So you can like see exactly what people are searching for 
how many searches are there per month, how many competitors are going to be competing with you on this product. So I like to look for what I call unicorns, where which are products that have a lot of search volume and not a lot of competition. So it's me and a couple other people out there making like this specific product. So there's not much competition and there might be like a couple hundred or a couple thousand searches for that thing per month. And even if I can get just like a small piece of the pie, let's say for easy math, there's a thousand people searching for something and I can just get like 5% of those thousand, which is if there's not a lot of competition, isn't outlandish, like 50 people per month. And those are selling for, you know, $5 a piece, that digital product, that's $250 in near passive income. Like again, obviously you have to create the product. So it is some like front loading the work, but if you can get enough of these like mini passive income streams, it can end up to be a pretty sizable profit every month. So you hit my other one. I'll say it out loud so people <laughs> know that I was thinking about it. How do you come up with profitable ideas? What about, or are there any upfront costs? Honestly, it's mostly a time and energy investment. It's pretty low cost. You can do this for free with a program like Canva. Uh, I mean, I use Canva Pro, which is like $10 a month, but you don't have to. Um, that's one cost. E-Rank, that keyword research tool I mentioned, does have a free version. You can buy the Pro version, which I think is like also $10 a month. So if you want to like go with the Pro tools, you're looking at like $20 a month, but you can do it with the free stuff. And I think Etsy itself, like to list a product, it just costs 20 cents to list a product. There's no monthly fees to have a shop or anything, or anything like that. So honestly, it's just like, if you have time and energy, that's that's the, the investment that you're gonna be making. It's not like you need a bunch of capital to get started. And I think you hit this. I am not an Etsy seller. That's why I have the expert on the show. What are the fees for Etsy? Like, what is the cost of doing business on Etsy? So Etsy has a 6.5% transaction fee. So if you sell something that's $10, you will give Etsy 65 cents. And that's to be on their platform. People are like, oh, like, I don't want to give Etsy a piece of the pie. But it's kind of like selling on Amazon. That's how what I like to equate it to is like Etsy is they have 100 million plus buyers. If you were to try to just like generate your own traffic and get people to find these digital products, it'd be really, really hard unless you had like a big social media presence or something. Etsy is giving you the customers. Like as long as you know, you know and understand how to find out what people are searching for through the keyword research I was just mentioning, like Etsy is literally going to hand feed you customers. So it's only fair that they take a little slice of the pie. So there's a 6.5% transaction fee. And then there's like a little bit of processing fees if depending on like the like the processor, like a Stripe or a PayPal. It's kind of just like a, yeah, like a transaction fee. So, but all in like on a $10 product, you're looking at maybe giving up 80 cents. It's, it's not, it's it's pretty good profit margins overall, given the fact that Etsy is giving you access to a hundred million customers who are willing to buy something. Nice. And to that point, obviously we got here from Twitter, <laughs> yeah. uh, but like, how do you find your customers? How do you market or do you market? Yeah, so I have done a little bit. I honestly don't market very much on social media, which might be surprising to some people. I just play the keyword research SEO game. So I am just kind of banking on Etsy's algorithm to bring the right people to me based on like the keywords that I'm putting in the title and in the tags and in the description based on what comes up in E-Rank. And you know, again, I'm trying to find those unicorn products, the ones that have a lot of search volume or a decent amount of search volume and not much competition. So yeah, quite honestly, this is not like a side hustle. Like I didn't have a big following at the beginning and this isn't a side hustle that you need a big following for. You just need to understand like kind of how to play the game. You need to know how to do the keyword research, understand SEO a bit, but yeah, Etsy is good in that you don't need to have an Instagram or Twitter or YouTube following. You can just kind of sell to random people. Awesome. And so I was preparing for this going through the Googles and it said, how do you, you need to be prepared to deal with negative reviews and frequently asked questions. So have you had to deal with that? And if so, how? Yeah. So frequently asked questions. That's a good one. Etsy actually has like a smart reply tool. So a common one you'll get is someone doesn't understand that it's a digital product, or they might just not know how to download the digital product. This is probably the most common question I get. And in my Etsy auto replies, like the smart, the, sa the saved replies, I can just like literally copy and paste it and send it off in two seconds. So that is like the only part because if someone's like, it's not hundred percent passive. It's like, okay, I send like five, I, I spend five minutes a week, maybe, maybe in my Etsy messages sending like, it's usually that one. It's usually like, how do I access my file? And then I just go in my saved replies, send them that. When it comes to negative reviews, again, this is usually you try to mitigate this at the front. So it's being really, really clear, like, this is a digital product because again, this is where most of the negative reviews are probably going to come in. Someone thinks 
if you're selling like a an invitation and it's just a printout, but they think you're they might think that they're actually getting like a stack of invitations mailed to their house. You're like, no, this is a digital product. You have to print it out. Um, this is not getting delivered to your house. Just be really, really clear in your description and your listing images. And that will that'll get like 99% of the people that might complain. For the one percenters, you can you know try to reason with them. Sometimes there's no reasoning with them. I have offered a refund just like in advance to kind of like appease them. So then they didn't give me a bad review or because they were getting frustrated, sending me all caps stuff. But that happens very, very rarely. So I think out of my reviews, I have like a couple that aren't five stars. I want to say like less than 10 and I have hundreds of reviews and most of them are five stars. Black Mirror tells us how important reviews are. Uh, so how, how are you or how does that impact or drive sales? Is that the same on Etsy? Are they important or is it just something for people to research? Yeah, it's definitely a good proxy. I mean, whenever I buy stuff on Amazon, if it's like less than like 4.4 stars, I'm like, eh, is that really a product I want to buy? So it's the same thing with Etsy. Like you want to protect that rating. You want to be answering people quickly, having good customer service. You want to make sure like the 1%, the crazy people that are typing in all caps, make them happy. Like just make, make them happy. Give them a refund. If you need to give them a refund, be really clear, send them their how to download this digital file instructions and you should be good. Most of the time, if people are like following those basic rules of like being a good person and offering decent customer support, you're not going to get hammered with a bunch of one star reviews. Kind of move towards the wrap. What is the most important thing to know about being an Etsy seller? So here's kind of the sneaky thing that people don't spend enough time on. And I like to equate the listing image as the gatekeeper. And you're a YouTube guy, Marcus. It's kind of like the YouTube thumbnail. You could have the best, let's just use YouTube as the example. You could have the best video ever, super informative, answers all the viewers' questions, has the best title ever, has the best description ever. If you just have like a thumbnail that's not attractive, you just have like a pile of dirt and it's about making money, like people aren't gonna click on it because it has nothing to do with what you're teaching. So that thumbnail, that listing image on Etsy is everything. The listing image, that hero image, you should be spending an inordinate amount of time creating that like main one image because you can add up to 10 listing images per product on Etsy. You should spend like 99% of your time on that first image. And then if you want to add a couple more to explain exactly what your digital product is, then fine. But you really need that gatekeeper to like, be like, come on guys, come over here. This is exactly what you're looking for. This is the product that you've been searching for in the Etsy search bar, because if not like that, they're just not going to click on it again. Even if it's the best title ever, it's a perfect product. If that main listing image isn't good enough for them to click on, you're not going to be making sales with that thing. Those are all my questions. I think that's a great ending. If you have more, drop them in the comments and tell Cody, where can they find you to get their questions out to you on the social medias? Yeah. On social media, I am at Cody D Berman everywhere for specifically for digital products. We have like a whole channel and social media just de just dedicated to that. That's at Gold City Ventures. And yeah, you'll you'll get you can answer you can hit us up via DM and you'll get a bunch of other free content about digital products too. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you.